Hi everyone, welcome to Blending Graphics. Today's video, I'm gonna show you how we can basically turn anything into stone. So I wanna give you some tips and tricks along the way to help us out in that department. And for this video specifically, I'm gonna give you all the different stock images you need if you wanna follow along. You're gonna get a couple of extra textures as well if you, know, you wanna try something else and experiment with those different pictures with doing the same techniques that I'm gonna provide with you today. For today's video, we're gonna basically use this person's arm and transition that from normal skin texture into a stone and rock texture. But like I said, you can use this and transition anything into stone. So if you have like a nice animal picture that you wanna use instead of the arm, feel free to use that. The techniques are all gonna be the same. So anyways, let's go ahead and check this out and let's get started. All right, so here we are with a blank canvas, 1350 by 1080. We're gonna start turning on these different textures that we're gonna to use today. I'm not gonna use all of them, just a couple of them, but if you wanna go ahead and experiment with some of the other ones, feel free and do so. To start things off, we're gonna use the pen tool and we just wanna extract the arm from its background real fast. So let's go ahead and do that. And then as you get to the very end and you connect everything, you just wanna right click, make a selection, and then click on that layer mask option so we have it by itself. Then we're gonna add a layer underneath Fill that with black so that we have a completely black background. Okay, so what we want to do is first slide this arm all the way to the left of the canvas. Okay, and then let's add a hue and saturation adjustment layer, clip it to that arm, and then we want to desaturate this arm pretty much all the way here. And click on that layer mask. We want to make sure we have a soft round brush. And then let's just paint black on the left side as we just kind of want to transition to those gray tones of the arm. Obviously the gray is going to be where we're going to apply all that rock texture. So I don't want it on the entire arm of what we have, just I want it to slowly transition to the affected area. All right, so we've grouped that together. We want to make a copy of that by pressing Ctrl or Command J and then merge those together by pressing Ctrl or Command E. So with this merged copy, what we're actually going to use is the smudge tool because right now our person got a lot of hair and well, quite frankly, we don't want that. So we're using this smudge tool to help smooth out these tones of the arm and kind of get rid of those hair textures. And I've already lowered the strength a little bit, we can do a bit more, but we're just brushing over this, like I said, smudging these tones together to help smooth it out and get rid of all of the hair. We can also get rid of a lot of these different creases in the hand as well. And what I've just done is sampled a nice grayish tone and painting over this, because that's gonna help give it that smooth look that we want as well. Okay, so at this point, let's add a layer mask and we're just gonna refine this a little bit. I've inverted that by pressing Command I and right now we're just gonna paint a lot of this back in. Like I said, we're just gonna kind of refine this a little bit here. So that looks pretty good. And let's go ahead and turn on our first texture. We're gonna repeat those same steps of adding that human saturation adjustment layer and desaturating this so we just have the black and white. And then once we have that, we're gonna shift and click the bottom layer, right click, and then convert this to a smart object so we have that merge into one. You know what I'm gonna quickly do is just do the same thing with our other textures that I have real fast. All right, so let's go back to our original texture that we had. We're gonna make a copy of that by pressing Command J. And then let's go ahead and Command T to transform this. We're gonna scale this down a little bit and maybe rotate this. And I wanna start with the forearm first. Let's lower the opacity. Okay, let's right click this and then we wanna to go to our warp feature here and we just wanna wrap this around the arm so that way it looks more realistic and isn't completely flat. Okay, so let's add a layer mask and then invert it by pressing Command I. Make sure that we have white as our foreground using a soft round brush. We're gonna reveal a lot of this texture that we had just applied. And we don't wanna go overboard with this, just kind of make it a nice subtle transition. All right, so let's go ahead and make another copy of that. We're gonna do the same thing again with the bicep area this time. So we're just going back to that warp, making sure that it looks good and it's fit the way it should be. Add the layer mask, invert it, and then paint some of this back in. And if you are someone that's new to using textures, I do have a video that goes a bit more in depth with explaining how to use textures in your projects. So feel free to check that out. We are going to use one final texture of this crack texture on the hand here. And once we've completed this, we can go ahead and move on to our next texture. And you'll notice too that I try to align 
certain areas of the texture with parts of the body. So you can see that a lot of the cracks I try to align with the creases of the hand or part of the arm. So just things to think about as you're using these textures yourself. All right, so anyways, our base is set. Let's add our next texture. And we're gonna use the quick selection tool, come down to the bottom area. I'm pretty much drawn to this spot here because I like this indentation. So I'm just using the quick selection tool around this area. Once I have enough of the area that I want, I'm gonna press Command J to create a copy of the selection, turn the original layer off, and then we're just going to find a nice spot for this on the arm. And honestly, this can be the most challenging part of the tutorial and the project is just finding the right area that you wanna use and apply this to. All right, so now I'm using a hard round brush to just kind of refine the area that I don't want to use and just kind of chip away at some of those spots. All right, I'm switching back to a soft round brush this time so that way we can start to blend this in with the arm here. I don't want too much of this texture of the rock so I want to preserve some of our original skin that we have. So something like this looks pretty good. We can refine it a bit more. So let's see how this looks zoomed out. Yeah, I think that looks pretty nice. What I'm gonna do is just press Command T and I want to just kind of move this maybe up here a little bit more. What I have in mind for my person here is I want the most amount of rock transformation to be by the hand. So I don't really want there to be too much rock transformation close to that elbow area. And so with this texture here, we're just going to add on to what we've already started. So let's just use the quick selection tool at this top part, press Control or Command J to create a copy of that. And then we're gonna shrink this down and put this underneath our first layer here and just rotate this. And somewhere right about here, I think looks, actually looks pretty cool. So we'll put it right here. And then now we just need to blend those edges a lot better so it doesn't look so jagged and rough. Yeah, I think that looks pretty cool. Okay, on to the next one. So we just find the spot that we want. Again, I'm kind of drawn to the bottom part of this texture. So I'm just using the quick selection tool to get as much of this area that I want. It's better to have more to work with than less, so just make sure you have a nice area to work with. And then press Control or Command J once you're satisfied. And with this one, I'm going to move this up to the hand. And at the very top part of that, where it starts to bend a little bit, I'm trying to align that with kind of the base of the fingers on the other side of the knuckle area is kind of what I'm trying to align with. So think about that when you're using your textures. Use the different parts of it to your advantage in areas that make sense or looks like they would make sense with the hand or what you're working with. And then we're just gonna get rid of the areas that we don't want. Feel free to even switch between a hard round brush tip and a soft round brush to kind of clean up these edges as well because there are gonna be some spots on here where you wanna preserve the integrity and the shape of that texture. So using the hard round brush at times like that could be nice. And at this point, it's really up to your personal preference as to how much of this texture you want to have visible. I kind of like the less is more approach and so I like to scale a lot of this back so it's not too overbearing and you can still see the original hand in the original image that you're working with. And to be honest with you, finding that balance of how much of that texture you actually want to reveal can be the challenging part of this project that you're working on. Okay, I think that looks really good. We're off to a good start. I'm actually gonna go ahead and speed through this next section because we're just gonna repeat the same stuff over and over again with the same textures. And I've already walked you through and talked you through what we need to do to accomplish that. So I'll be back with you in just a second once I've applied this texture on.
Okay friends, I'm back. We're going back to our original texture and for this we're actually going to scale this up a little bit because I want to use the cracks on the left side of this image here and I'm going to lower the opacity because I want to align those cracks with that hole that's right in the middle of that forearm there. So just somewhere right around here and let's add a layer mask and invert that and let's just paint this back in just to kind of see where we're at. And I'm just using a soft round brush to paint this back in. And let's make sure we get the left side of that as well. And I'm thinking we're probably gonna just move this over a little bit so it makes a little bit more sense. So let's go ahead and do that. Control or Command T. And then we can just nudge this down a bit here. Maybe over a little bit. This spot looks good. Okay, let's just go back to that layer mask and let's just kind of refine this area a bit more and clean it up a bit. And I think this should just about do it for us. All right, so let's go ahead and center this back up a little bit here. I'm gonna go back into those cracks a little bit. Just make sure that those dark parts are really black. So let's just paint white just in those little crack areas. Just because that this crack is much larger than the rest of the texture on the arm, I wanna make sure that that crack itself is nice and dark and not a really faded tone. All right, so that looks good. Let's go ahead and move on from here. We're gonna go back to that same texture again. And for this, I kind of want to outline the shape of that bicep muscle. So I'm lining up this crack and we're gonna lower the opacity a bit more there just so I can make sure that everything lines up, but kind of how it curves, I wanna match where the shaded area of that muscle is. And I can't stress this enough. Just like I said before, use the physical features of not only your subject, but even of your texture to your advantage. All right, we're gonna switch back to our other texture that we were using and still work on that same area of the arm right there by the elbow and the bicep area. So let's create a selection of this bottom portion and then press Command J once you're happy with that. And what we can even do with this, uh, we're gonna bring it down here first, but you can even play around with the blend modes and see what this looks like. Overlay actually looks kind of cool. So, you know, feel free to experiment with blend modes as well. Uh, let's go ahead and press uh, Control Command T and let's just find a nice spot. What I want to do is right where that crease of the bicep meets the forearm, I kind of want to outline that with one of the areas of the rock and the cracks of the rock. So we're just rotating this to see if there's a spot that looks really good. And oh, this actually looks really nice right here. Let's scale this up even more so. And I kind of like the look of this. So I'm happy with that. I've added a layer mask and inverted it. And we can go to our original arm, command click on that so we have the selection and we're only painting inside of that. And we're just gonna reveal little by little, just kind of right at that crease area. And I actually love this little indentation there right by that bicep muscle. You know, sometimes you do have these little happy accidents and that's kind of what happened here. I don't always go in and know exactly how I want it to look. I just kind of, like I said, use these images to my advantage. And I'm actually switched back to the normal blend mode and not in overlay anymore. All right, let's go ahead and deselect. We're going to make a copy of this layer that we're on by pressing Command J. And then we're just gonna get rid of this layer mask there. Let's delete that. And then we're gonna use this texture right there on the forearm by that big crack area. So somewhere right there. Let's go ahead and hit that check mark, add the layer mask and invert it. And we're gonna command click on the arm once more and just paint this back in. We want it to be a very, very subtle addition and nothing too crazy right here. And you know, as I'm doing this, I'm realizing that it just looks a bit too cluttered for my liking. So we're gonna adjust that here in just a second. I'm gonna finish this up first.
All right, just a little bit more and that should do the trick. Good, okay. So uh, that big spot right there at the forearm, that hole, I just wanna shrink that down and maybe move that a little bit. So let's just go ahead and find those layers. It's towards the bottom. All right, so that's good. Let's highlight these two and group them together. And then we're gonna Command T and we're just gonna scale this down a little bit. Like I said, it's, you know, it can be really easy to get carried away with adding all this stuff in. So try not to go too wild with it. So let's just find a good spot for this. Maybe somewhere closer up to this other little crack area. Yeah, I think that'll be fine just right here. All right, so let's just go ahead and add a layer mask to this group now. And then we can just maybe even zoom in a little bit here and just clean this up and try to make this look a bit more tidy. And of course, when you zoom in is when you see all these little mistakes. So we're trying to find, there it is. That's the layer that we want. Let's go ahead and get rid of these little spots here. All right, yeah, I'm much happier now that we've made that little decision there. Okay, so now we're gonna apply that same texture right by that uh, big crack. We're gonna do the same thing for the rest of this forearm here. So let's just line this up accordingly. And add that layer mask, invert it, and let's just paint this back in. All right, let's see how this looks real fast. Maybe I'll just clean this up just a little bit more and then we should be good to go. All right, so with our top layer selected, we're gonna hold the shift key, click the bottom one, command G to group all of those together. So now what we want to do is add a new layer above that group. We're going to switch to black. And what happens sometimes is when you add these different textures, you start to lose the original lighting of your original subject. So we want to bring that back. We want to make sure that the shaping and the lighting is correct. So that way the effect that we're trying to pull off here is, well, effective. But not only now do we need to match the original lighting that we had with the hand, we wanna make sure that the if we have cracks to exaggerate some of the, the depths of those cracks or the areas where the skin is starting to elevate, you know? So that's gonna start playing around with your highlights and shadows as well. And I'm not going for perfection here by any means. I'm just kind of zipping through this pretty quick here just for the sake of the tutorial. But if this is your project, take your time with this. I can't stress that enough. So anyways, just give me a few more seconds with this and I'm just going to make my way towards the bottom of that arm there and then we can wrap this up and move on to our last and final thing. So the last thing that we want to add to really sell this effect is I'm going to one of my debris brushes that I've made. And honestly, it's just a couple of little circles uh, that you can fill in really easy to make. But we're going to find a nice little gray color to use with this at 100% opacity. And let's scale this down quite a bit. That's a bit too large. So some of these big areas where we have chunks missing, we're just going to add a little debris there. Uh, let's maybe switch this up a little bit more and see how this looks. Maybe I'll rotate it, the brush a little bit. And I want to make this pop a little bit more. So let's make this a little bit brighter. And let's try this again. Okay, so that looks good. And we can even switch up the debris brushes, have a little bit of variety. And like I said, just kind of going around to some of these areas that have chunks missing. We'll just add debris falling from that. And by doing this, you know, we're taking that extra length to add that element and really sell this effect. And we can switch up the brush one last time here and then maybe just add this to a couple more spots and that will pretty much do it for this tutorial. All right, so here it is, ladies and gentlemen, our arm transitioning from normal skin texture into a stone texture. I hope you like this video and well, I hope this was something that maybe you've never done before and trying some new things out here. 
If you like this video and maybe like doing more videos like this as opposed to just regular compositions, let me know down there in the comment section and in the future might have more effect tutorials and how to kind of tutorials. So I would love to hear from you and what your thoughts are about this. If you're getting any value from these videos, please subscribe if you're not doing so already and help spread the word. I hope to have you back for our next video here at Blended Graphics. In the meantime, please take care. I'll see you soon.